Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I'll explain, yeah. I'll explain to you after you finish. I'll call you. Okay. Okay, go ahead. I'm here again. Uh, I got a call from Grand Ezra. This all rise. Let's begin our number three by offering one standard bow to our July two fans. And then move off to the bar, the bay. There's a bit of tea. Tim Bay. But all. Most rather heavenly fan today, Wednesday, April the 22nd, 2015, here at Washington Family Church, National Cathedral. We pray that today would be a victorious day by our two parents, with our true Father in heaven and our true Mother here on earth. We pray for the true children here in, in the spiritual world. And we pray that we are, they will be met with our true mother. But we pray for all the true grandchildren too, and all the members who are attending. We pray for Benjamin and Princess Ben and all the staff and we pray as well for the BF chairman, Bishop Jonathan Chiang, and Sam, and all the continental leaders all over the world. We pray for the national national presidents all over the world. We pray for Reverend Dr. Michael Malcolm, his wife Kumiko, and the children, the staff at 4 4:30 Street. We pray for their success all over. We pray for all the regional leaders and bishop pastors to hear and adore, especially. One, we pray for Reverend Ernest Patton and Jacob Hanna and their children. We pray for all the pastors and center leaders all over the world. We pray for Reverend James Stewart in Holston Center, his wife. There, congregation. We pray for Reverend Makira Alta and Norfolk, Brother Adrian Bai in Richmond, Virginia, and in the Beltway. We pray for Major Red Green and the pastors in Maryland. Washington, D.C., we pray for the ACLC chairman, Archbishop Augusta Charles, and his wife and children, and our pastor, Reverend Xavier Alder, and his daughter, Brianna, and his holy family, and all the members 
sort of be down to. Good morning. We're now on page uh, 252, where we left off. Number two, Buddha's message to Buddhists and believers in other religions. I would like to send a last message to religious people on earth, especially to Buddhists. As was mentioned by Jesus as a representative of each major religion, we four religious founders are making efforts for world peace and the salvation of humankind. This may be comprehensible to early people in the spirit world, the four major religious founders and other saints and sages are often gathered together for seminars where we have no confrontation or conflicts with each other. Before coming to the seminars, we were individually educated in the divine principle and other subjects. Having attended several workshops, was it easy to create such a gathering of the founders of religions? It was possible only after many prayers and special conditions, with thorough and repeated reviews and analysis. Now, through these seminars, we can discuss things as members of the same family. We have no conflicts based on religious prejudices. Whenever we are gathered for this purpose, God embraces us with splendid light and slowly leaves us in a friendly atmosphere, joyfully looking at us. Dear Buddhists, even Jesus testified that he came with a messianic mission in the New Testament age. What I did was similar. According to the Bible, the completed Testament age is to arrive after the Old Testament age and the New Testament age. Whenever a certain providential period arrived, God led a new dispensation through a new central figure. Although my path as the Buddha was not in the mainstream of God's providence, it is undeniable that I strove to guide people to goodness. Further, I believe that encouraging Buddhists to keep their celibacy was while waiting for the right time to arrive was quite effective for their spiritual training and cultivation, even if it was not the direct way to God. From the perspective of Christian history, the time of the Buddha was like the Old Testament age. 
It may be unfamiliar, but during the time, the benefit of the age of human salvation could not go any further. Buddha lived on earth during that time period, and his teachings were quite influential. Dear Buddhists, I'm not saying that your way of life thus far has been wrong. Like Jesus, in my time, I also did my best to guide humankind in the right direction. However, with the passing of time, the task needed for the salvation of humankind have changed. What I am trying to do is to engraft the fruit of Buddhists who are raised through my methods of spiritual cultivation. Please study the unification principle. You will find there a considerable, considerable number of truths that also flow through the teachings of Buddhism. Do not be immersed in old-fashioned ideas and concepts but by accepting the new truth engrafted to the truth of Buddhism, then I am sure that a wonderful passage of faith will open to you. In this age, Reverend Sun Myung Moon is the Buddha for whom you would have been waiting. Make a special condition as a Buddhist at a shrine. It is time for you to be true to the highest standard of Buddhist integrity. Do not reject the new Buddha who is to come in the completed testament age. Do not reject his truth. Demonstrate the virtue of compassion as practiced by numerous Buddhists who have cultivated their spirituality. Do not look for faults in, other, in others, but act with humility and prudence. What is truth? Depending on the historical era, the direction for human beings can change. Look at the world of nature. All things God created can change in color and size depending on the environment, but the species remain the same. Who can quell the voice of the original mind through which human beings are striving to lead a life of faith? However, depending on the sound of the voice of the original mind, the mode of human life varies, bringing different aspects of joy to God. Therefore, do not be fixed on an old-fashioned idea. Expand the horizon of your ideas and views. If I told you Jesus and Buddha are getting along as brothers, you Buddhists would not believe me. However, I cannot help it. God wants us to work together as one. In your opinion, what would Jesus call Buddha? He called him Honored Buddha with a smile and a soft voice, always being humble. Once Buddha speaks, he always responds positively with a bright and cheerful expression saying, yes, right, that is correct, and let's do it. Dear fellow Buddhists and Christians, as heaven and earth are united as one, bring the world of peace, should the earth not be united as well? Let us be uni unified by the new truth in this new era. Reverend Sun Myung Moon is leading the completed testament age, and he is the Buddha to come. This is the conclusion drawn in these seminars of 
the four major religious founders. Let us now liberate God by bringing oneness between Buddhism and Christianity. And we're now on page 256. And uh, that was April 6, 2001. Number three. Confucius' message to Conf Confucianists and all people on earth. When human beings live in the flesh in order to sustain their physical life, they decide on certain norms and live within that boundary. Human beings did not know better, being limited by their physical senses. They tried to cope with problems within limited boundaries by seeing and hearing what appeared to be reality. Although the four major religious founders thoroughly reveal the contents they learned in these seminars, since they are invisible to the eyes of early people, they cannot readily accept it as real. However, the four major religious founders and other saints and sages here struggled more than anyone else for the salvation of humankind. Other than Jesus, they may not be Messiahs, but they willingly denied their physical comfort for the sake of humanity. Never taking life lightly, they are the ones who proclaimed the truth and sought to teach it to people guiding them to a better life. Such are the individuals gathered together here. Even after they offered their physical body, they cared for and cherished their followers on earth as themselves. Because they endeavored and toiled so hard to guide them to a better direction, they are qualified to attend these gatherings. As was already stated by Jesus and Buddha, the spirit world here is truly harmonious. Jesus introduced himself before the Buddhist participants and said, since we are, we are gathered together, let us have worship in both the Christian way and the Buddhist way. And let us talk about our views in on the life of faith. Likewise, Buddha offered a full bow to the Christians at the gathering and humbly said, Thank you for giving me a chance to greet you. These two great founders then exhorted everyone to reconcile with each other despite some differences in their beliefs. Then some noise arose from a corner of that gathering. Jesus said in a gentle voice, Dear brothers and sisters, we all are children of God, and therefore brothers and sisters to each other. And it is time for us to show God harmony among us. The atmosphere calmed down and turned Solemn. Then God appeared as light. He swirled quietly in the beginning and later transformed the entire area into brightness. Everyone there was taken aback with surprise and mesmerized by its splendor. They did not know what to do. During our seminars, God frequently demonstrated his thoughtfulness. I believe that such meeting will continue. We believe that through gatherings among the four great re religious founders and other saints and sages, all power struggles among religions and denominations will disappear. Then the doors to the truth will open to all people 
from different backgrounds. Dear Confucianist, how can I help you? In the world, there are various races, religions, cultural backgrounds, and customs that change depending on the situation. Despite that, all people have one thing in common, our human identity. Regardless of whether we are white, black, or yellow, once a person goes to a hospital, the method of treatment is identical for the same ailment. It is so because the human anatomic structure is, is, does not vary with race. What does this mean? It means that we, are, we all are, have the same creator. There is only one creator who is God. God is our parent. If we attend him, all will be well. And now we turn to page 258. Nevertheless, why everything is so complicated ever since the wrong beginning of human history different religious or religions have arisen the unification of religions is therefore necessary and for this purpose god sent reverend sun myung moon to the earth he does not say that the religious doctrines taught by each religion are wrong, but presents one simple truth that everyone can unite with. Yet each religion still insists that their teaching alone is correct and the only right way. That is why things become so complicated. So I believe that we desperately need to yield to each other with a willingness to accept others. No matter how noisy it is on earth, the representatives from the major religions are tightly bonded here. Bonded by what? There is only one truth. All of us have resolved that we will live with God, attending him as our parent, what then will my followers on earth do? It is not difficult to guess. Dear Buddhists, your greatest teacher is attending God as the parent of humankind. God is your great Maitreya Buddha. Thus, you should no longer dwell in self-centered self-centeredness, but instead examining your daily life on earth, live in preparation for your future life here in the spirit world. Humankind is one people and one tribe. Reverend Sun Myung Moon was sent to attend only one God and teach his heavenly law. Find out what he is doing for human liberation, despite the fact that he is over 80. 80. Dear earthly people, the place you will dwell for eternity is here in the spirit world. Earthly life is nothing but a temporary training center. During the harvest time, only good grain will be restored will be stored thus you should live a mature life dear followers of confucius please consult the messages from jesus buddha confucius and other saints and sages and make a wise decision for your future life
Now it's already 5 and 26, and that was from April 7, 2001. Uh, should I continue, uh, Reverend Oliver? We have here number four subtopic. Muhammad's message for Muslims and people on earth. We got three minutes more. Hello? I think there's only one page. Oh no, two pages. I think we end here on page 258. So we read today about Buddha's message to Buddhists and believers in other religions and Confucius' message to Con Confucianists and all people on earth. And is there anyone who wants to share about the reading today? Anyone? Anyone who wants to share about the reading? Okay, on page 253, in the first paragraph, subtopic number two, Buddha's message to Buddhists and believers in other religions, I would like to send a last message to religious people on earth, especially to Buddhists. As was mentioned by Jesus, as the representatives of each major religion, we four religious founders are making efforts for world peace and the salvation of humankind. This may not be comprehensible to earthly people. In the spirit world, the four major religious founders and other saints and sages are often gathered together for seminars where we have no confrontation or conflicts with each other. Before coming to the seminars, we are individually ed educated in the divine principle and other subjects having attended several workshops. So he attended uh, several workshops. And was it easy to create such gatherings of founders of religions? So in any gathering, we make conditions. So it was possible only after many prayers and special conditions with thorough and repeated reviews and analysis. Now through these seminars we can discuss things as members of the same family. And uh, you know, we have no conflicts based on religious prejudices. Whenever we are gathered for this purpose, God embraces us with splendid light and slowly leaves us in a friendly atmosphere, joyfully looking at us. So, the four great founders is um, Jesus Christ, Buddha, Confucius, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and all the saints and sages are there. And Buddha reports that there's no conflict there. They always live in harmony. As we have also read today that uh, Jesus called Buddha, he calls him honored Buddha. And he responds, Positively, with a bright and cheerful expression. You're, yes, right. That is correct. And of course, let's do it. 
and he makes an appeal through our medium. Dear fellow Buddhists and Christians, as heaven and earth are united as one, bringing the world of peace, should the earth not be united as well? So let us be unified by the new truth in this new era. So at the time, Father was still living, of course, and at 80 years so old. Reverend Sang Yang Moon is leading the complete testament age. And he is the Buddha to come. And this is the conclusion drawn in these seminars of four major religions, founders. So let us liberate God, God by bringing oneness between Buddhism and Christianity. April 6, 2001. At the time, True Father was still alive here on earth. So, uh, my wife is Buddhist. I was brought up in a Christian country in the Philippines. And there's uh, some kind of animosity if you're a Christian who goes to Thailand because uh, their experience with the Christians there is like, uh, you know, taking over or land grabbing or, you know, there's a conflict uh, when a Christian school is being uh, made on a predominantly uh, Buddhist uh, neighborhood. So they have a hard sell on, you know, inviting children who are children of Buddhists. But uh, I saw all the South school, some English school, some Christian schools, all over uh, Thailand, and of course uh, they are opening up. I think from the efforts of our brothers and sisters there. Um, you know, witnessing, and many already have, you know, offered their lives there, and even Christians also. Um, they died because of, you know, uh, propagating uh, their religion. So, anybody else wants to share about our reading today? Anyone from the teleconference? Uh, Reverend Ezra? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, I wasn't able to listen to the whole reading. I um, see. So I just. I'm mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I stopped at uh, 527 uh, a.m. And then, of course, uh, I reflected already yeah, on Buddha's message to Buddhists in the, uh, beli and believers in the other religions. So do you have anything to share, uh, either on Confucius' uh, message to Confucianists, to all people and all people on earth, or even from Buddha? And uh, I think I, I was also uh, inspired here that uh, in his uh, last paragraphs here of his message to all Confucianists by Confucius, uh, you know, uh, he is telling that Buddhists your greatest teacher is attending God as a parent of all humankind. So he's telling Confucianists and all people. Then you should no longer dwell in self-centeredness, but instead examining your daily life on earth. Live in the preparation for your future life in the spirit world. Humankind is one people and one tribe. And Reverend Sun Moon was sent to attend only one God and 
teach his heavenly law. So find out what he is doing for human liberation, despite the fact that he is over 80. So again, this was April the 7th, 2001, his father was still alive. So dear, dear earthly people, the place you will dwell for eternity is here in the spirit world. Earthly life, Confucius said, is nothing but a temporary training center. It's like a school of life. So during the harvest time, only good grain will be stored. So thus, you should live a mature life. And dear followers of Confucius, please consult the messages from Jesus, which we read yesterday, Buddha, that we read today, Con Confucius and other saints and sages, and make a wise decision for your future life, April the 7th, 2001. So tomorrow we'll be reading Muhammad's, or Prophet Muhammad's, message to Muslims and people on earth. Anybody else wants to share about a reading today? Anyone? So if there's none, let's uh, all rise and have unison prayer. A most beloved heavenly parent, Heavenly Father, and our two mothers here on earth, we pray that today, as we have read your messages, we are so inspired to know that they are also in harmony with their the four great fathers of religion. Pray that all the people of all over the world from various religions would also work in harmony and in peace and they can learn also about the divine principle that we offer here every weekend and even every weekday on Wednesday here at Boston Sound Family Church. We pray that as we do these conditions and many conditions, nighttime, we pray that we can always bring about the salvation of not only the spiritual salvation but the physical salvation that was given by our true parents here on earth. We pray that we can share this to others always, to our friends and relatives and even office mates and uh, town mates and country mates and all over the world. We pray that as they address all their followers here on earth, we pray that they seem to be coming from these families who are very concerned about the religious strife and even now they're using even religion to persecute and even kill babies that are from a different religion. We pray our heavenly parents that this will stop and there will be religious harmony and there will be peace on earth. And we pray that children go to will happen in many places all over the world and it will cover all over the world and we pray all of this in all our names and in my name as the master of Christ to speak at the land bless the temple of Zion adieu 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 unison song Uri yes ho Oh.
and wonderful Wednesday. Yes, you're welcome. And uh, please promote our international night on Friday. I'll see you there, those who are invited also. And uh, Tom McDevitt, the uh, CEO of Washington Times, will be there. So, Manse Manse, have a great and wonderful day. Bye bye. Yes. Bye bye.